that the history of Hampton Court Palace is in fact the tale of two palaces, a magnificent Tudor one developed by Cardinal Wolsey and later made infamous by Henry VIII, alongside an elegant Baroque one built by William and Mary nearly 200 years later. With over a thousand rooms, 18 courtyards and 750 acres of gardens and parkland, everything about Hampton Court Palace is designed to impress. From imposing gatehouses and ornate chimneys to grand sequences of state rooms, each is more splendid than the last. Henry VIII spent more than £62,000, equivalent to £18 million today, on rebuilding and extending the palace into one of the most modern, sophisticated and magnificent in England. All of Henry's six wives came to the palace and the king rebuilt his own rooms at least half a dozen times to match. And he used Hampton Court to impress. The palace hosted occasions of ostentatious display of wealth and conspicuous consumption but also deals were done here and treaties were signed that would help improve England's position in Europe. William and Mary later brought Baroque architecture and style to Hampton Court, commissioning Sir Christopher Wren to rebuild the palace. The east and south facades were completely transformed, replacing Tudor towers and chimneys with the grand and elegant Baroque exteriors that dominate the formal gardens today. Hampton Court Palace is the ultimate pleasure palace. The kitchens were the largest kitchens of Tudor England, a veritable factory designed to feed at least 600 people that made up Henry VIII's court twice a day. This was a vast operation, larger than any modern hotel, and one that had to cope without modern conveniences. Over 60 acres of beautiful gardens run down to the River Thames featuring sparkling fountains, displays of over 200,000 flowering bulbs, and there are 750 acres of royal parkland. The Great Vine, planted in 1768 by the celebrated gardener Capability Brown, is both the oldest and biggest in the world. The Privy Garden's symmetrical pattern, based on a design done for William of Orange in 1702, incorporates the original varieties of plants and marble sculptures, as well as the elaborate Tijoux screen in wrought iron and gold. And home parks, 700 acres, come with deer herds, ponds and waterways. And it's said that Henry VIII proposed to Anne Boleyn here. The scene of passions past and present, there's the tingling sensation that historical figures lived and loved here and their presence can still be felt. The palace's most famous ghost, the screaming lady in the haunted gallery, is said to be Henry VIII's fifth wife, Queen Catherine Howard, accused of adultery and beheaded at the Tower of London. For over 300 years, kings, courtiers and tourists alike have pounded the pathways of Hampton Court's world-famous trapezoidal maze. It's the only surviving part of William III's wilderness garden. With the monarch in residence, Hampton Court buzzed with the people of the court. Courtiers fawned and schemed, and behind closed doors, an army of workers fueled this protected world. Here, kings triumphed but also faced tragedy. Once beloved queens were sent to their death, and people fell from power. The Great Hall is England's last and greatest medieval hall, spanned by a large and sumptuously decorated hammer beam roof, and its walls are hung with Henry VIII's most splendid tapestries, the story of Abraham. The Great Watching Chamber was originally the first of Henry VIII's state rooms. If there was room here, Today, you can choose your run, own adventure by joining our costumed interpreters things, leading tours around the palace, giving dramatic presentations oh. about the stories and events in the places where they really happened. Shaped by generations of changes in taste, the palace is a melting pot of the finest architecture, craftsmanship and artistic achievement. Mantegna's set of paintings, The Triumphs of Caesar, is one of the greatest ever works of European art. 
Hampton Court is a royal palace magnificently dressed as befits its station to fulfil its important public role. But it's also fun-loving and creative, romantic and self-indulgent. A palace enjoying the privileges of its position.